In the collective imaginary and in media coverages, the Mayans are often represented as a barbaric, uncivilized, cruel, and war-prone population. However, were the Mayans just about cruelty, human sacrifices, and bloody city-state wars? Well, the answer is no, definitely not. On the contrary, the Maya civilization is impressive for a number of reasons, which have been overshadowed by historical negative depictions and are often confused with other civilizations from the same geographical area. Now, let's investigate what this mysterious Mayan society really looked like. The history of Mesoamerica is usually divided into specific periods which together reveal the development of the culture in the region. The Maya civilization can be divided into several general periods spanning around approximately 9 millennia, from year 7000 BCE until year 1524 CE. During this period, the civilization finds its roots, prosperity, and finally downfall. The periods are as follows, the Archaic period, the Pre-Classic period, the Classic Maya period, and the Post-Classic period. The Classic Maya period is widely considered to be the most significant for the civilization. Let's firstly dive into the socio-political context of the Maya. The ancient Maya lived in individual political states linked together through trade, political alliances, and tribute obligations. While some of these states were independent, others were part of a larger hierarchy. At the beginning, the Maya states were governed by simple chiefdoms, but by the classic period, Maya governance was represented by a powerful, centralized leader who legitimized his authority through his political connections and divide lineages. The Maya kings were seen as potent mediums in terms of communicating with their own ancestors and the king would also impersonate deities. At the time of the arrival of the Spaniards, the Yucatan region was made of 18 separate Maya states, many of them composed of smaller towns and villages under the jurisdiction of a capital city. We know that nine of these states were ruled by a single ruler, the Halaj Uinik, while others were by a council composed by the elite and advisors. The supreme military commander of each state was called Nakom. This person served for a three years mandate and defined the military strategy. The Halaj Uinik appointed the Batabs, the administrators of dependent cities or small villages within the states. The Batabs held administrative, judicial and even military functions in their town and ensured the payment of tributes to the chief and guaranteed the mobilization of soldiers for war. But the political structure was even more complex. Each Batab presided over a local council composed by town officials who in turn headed different sub subdivisions called Nalil within their cities and they also had assistance to fulfill their jobs. Maya's social structure was very rigid. There was the noble class whose status was passed on through elite family lineages. Nobles were wealthy and literate rulers. Government officials, tribute collectors, military leaders, high priests, local administrators, or trade expedition leaders. Then there were the commoners, who were farmers, laborers, and servants. In the Maya social structure, there was also a place for serfdom and slavery. Serfs worked the land owned by the ruler or the local town leader, while slaves were owned either by the elites or the commoners. Slave trade was very active in the Maya region, and one could become a slave either for crime punishment, to pay back his debt, as prisoner of war or by selling himself or his family members, but not as a hereditary legacy. War was another fundamental element of the Maya society. However, Maya didn't destroy cities because this could affect their ability to collect tributes from the conquered regions. Next up is the economic system and agriculture of the Maya. The Maya trade system was advanced with complex routes to the market for goods and materials. There wasn't a single currency which was universally accepted in all of its territory, as valuable items such as cacao seeds, salt, obsidian, or gold varied in value from one region to city or city-state to another. Two main kinds of goods were commercialized, prestige items and subsistence items. Prestige items could be considered as luxury artifacts like jade, gold, copper, highly decorated pottery, ritual items, and any other less practical items used as a status symbol by upper class Maya. Subsistence items were those used daily and most of them indispensable for several activities and necessities throughout the day 
meaning food, clothing, tools, basic pottery, salt, and others. The Mayan economic structure can be known as a ring model, in which central cities were consumers of products manufactured in communities distributed by different types of people around the centers. Besides that, the resources were provided according to what each region had best to offer. For example, the coast would exchange salt and fish for cotton, cacao, and honey from the interior. Agriculture formed the foundation of Maya economic life and civilization. When it comes to culture, the Maya civilization is noted for its elaborate writing, numerical and calendar systems, as well as the impressive art and architecture. The Mayan culture is still strong in the southern part of Mexico and parts of Central America, as there are millions of people who still speak Mayan languages. Mayan culture began to develop in the pre-classic period around 1000 BCE and was at its heyday between 300 and 900 CE. Despite sharing a common history and certain cultural attributes, ancient Maya culture was extremely diverse, largely due to the range of geographic and environmental conditions in which it developed. When the Mayan glyphs were finally fully deciphered, it became clear that besides being interested only in calendrical and astronomical matters, they were also interested in earthly ones. The ancient Maya used a numerical system based on just three symbols. A dot for one, a bar for five, and a shell which represented zero. Using zero and place notation, they were able to write large numbers and perform complex mathematical operations. They also formulated a unique calendar system with which they were able to calculate the lunar cycle as well as predict eclipses and other celestial events with great precision. The Maya had a complex religion with a huge pantheon of gods. In the Maya worldview, the planet on which we live is just one level of, mul of a multi-layered universe made up of 13 heavens and 9 underworlds. Each of these planets is ruled by a specific god and inhabited by others. Maya religious ceremonies included the ball game, human sacrifice of high status prisoners, a war only, and bloodletting ceremonies in which nobles pierce their tongues or genitals to shed blood as an offering to the gods. Contrary to the belief that cruel human sacrifices were conducted on a regular basis, there are no data to support that the Maya carried out sacrifice on such a large scale. The captive the Maya wanted were the elites from opposing polities because they represented competition and the capture, humiliation and torture of an elite warrior meant usurpation of their goods and resources. Maya architecture is best characterized by the soaring pyramid temples and the ornate palaces which were built in all Maya centers across Mesoamerica from El Tajin in the north to Copan in the south. The Maya civilization was formed of independent city-states and consequently there are regional variations in architecture but almost all buildings were constructed with a precise attention to position and layout and a general style prevails. Multi-level elevated platforms, massive step pyramids, corbelled roofing, monumental stairways, and exteriors decorated with sculpture and moldings of Maya glyphs, geometric shapes, and iconography from religion, such as serpent masks, are all typical features of Maya architecture. Interestingly, unlike many other cultures, Maya architecture makes no particular distinction between religious and non-religious buildings. And finally, we will talk about the collapse of the Maya civilization. During the classic period, the population may have topped 30 million people. However, between about 750 and 950 BC, their society started to implode. Historians have divided the Mayan collapse in three cycles. It is not possible to evoke a single, simple factor, although clearly anthropogenic environmental transformations and harsh climatological events rank highly among the contingencies that trickled the downfall of the Maya. Others include an expanding population that was operating at a near the limits of available resources environmental degradation in the form of deforestation and hillside erosion, increased internal disputes, civil warfare, and a leadership focused on short-term concerns. In conclusion, the Maya civilization may have collapsed due to the inability to adapt to climate exceptional events and to subsequent internal turmoils caused by 
unfortunate economic and political decisions taken in a context of resources shortages. It is important to remember that the Maya didn't disappear, they reorganized. So we should think of it more as a social reorganization than a general collapse.